Bonjour, bonjour. Hello, hello, everyone. I am so happy to finally be back in English and you can all thanks in the comment down below uh, Natalie. This is really because of her and she's going to help me to edit all those beautiful videos for all of you guys. So probably my English is going to be rusty because I have to say that it has been that it has been quite some time since the last time I have filmed um, in English. So please bear with me, but I am very happy um, to finally be back. So the topics of um, today's video is going to be, without any surprise about sunscreen, and especially Japanese sunscreens, because there is like a big, big, I think, misconception, especially in the Western world, about um, Japanese sunscreen that I think are very important to know, to know in order to basically use them um, in the proper fashion, let's put it like that. Uh, for all of you that happens to be new to my channel, first thing first, thank you so, so much for being here. Um, and if you do not know me, I am French. My name is Cyril. Laurent is actually my second uh, name. I used to be a former stem cell researcher. And this is why I can tell you about all the scientific stuff behind a formula, uh, especially uh, the biological point of view. And where I find most of my information are in published um, articles. And I don't say this like to promote myself, even though I do, <laughs> let's face it. Uh, but because I was a researcher, it also means that I have published papers under my name. So I know how to run experiments. I know how to um, analyze them. I know how to interpret them. I know how to write a proper scientific papers, which also means that I know like all the sort of wrong stuff, basically how to fake some results or why some experiments basically don't uh, prove the point and etc. And I think this is something very, very important, especially in the skincare world in a way, like in the skincare for skincare actives, I should say, because you have like a big part of the marketing that of course is here to sell products <laughs> basically. And I think it is really important to know that yes, if I'm paying for this active, either any legit science um, about it or not, which doesn't necessarily mean that if there is like absolutely no scientific data that necessarily this active is not going to work. It just means that we basically don't know. Anyway, so for today's video, uh, it's really focused, like I have said, on Japanese um, sunscreen. And um, you need to understand something in that, uh, especially sunscreen in Asia, even though I don't really like to, um, to generalize things, uh, are most of the time used a bit differently uh, as in the Western world. First thing first, um, in Japan for sure, uh, in South Korea they say the same, um, in Taiwan also. Uh, people are all willing to protect themselves from the sun and they want to absolutely avoid uh, getting tan. Therefore, even before using um, any sunscreen products, they are going to protect themselves. So they are not going to lay like for a long time on the beach and cook themselves. They are going to wear clothes to protect them, uh, themselves. Every time I go to Japan, South Korea, but this is the same also in Taiwan, you see like everybody, especially the women, but even, even the, the men that have like protective clothes when they're going to hike for example in korea you will see like even the men they have like long sleeve to protect their arms from um the um, the sun uh, like in taiwan for example a lot of people um use uh, bike bicycles and motorbike uh, motorbikes and what they're what they are doing is that they use um clothes even to protect them uh, their face uh, and big sunglasses under the helmet so it, it just to show you that I guess in Asia, everybody knows that sunscreen is just like a part of uh, the sun protection. And that I don't think that people really just rely only on them, basically. Uh, the other thing is also related to the climate, um, especially in Japan uh, during the summer, for example, it's very humid and very, very uh, warm to not say super hot. <laughs> actually, you are basically uh, melting it. And I have like so many memories that every time I am there in summer that my European sunscreen literally like melt from the skin, literally. Um, which is probably why a lot of um, the focus on um, Japanese sunscreen really relies 
on how the sunscreen film will really adheres and resist on the skin and they also emphasize the fact that they want something like uh, super matte. Um, I guess in general we can all say that uh, Japanese sunscreen especially for the UVA protection will be most likely less protective than the one in the EU. Am I sure of it? Of course not. I didn't test like all Japanese uh, sunscreen, so I cannot really tell you. Uh, in order to know, we will have like to run a test and, and make basically a comparison. But just know this is something that I've already told you in uh, the EU, but also in Australia. Uh, the UVA protection is indexed with the SPF, which means that the higher the SPF is, the higher the UVA protection will be. And in Europe, um, every SPF 50 plus, don't forget the plus people, the UVA protection will be of at least 20. In Japan, they're using the PA rating system and four pluses will mean that the UVA protection will be of at least 16. It could be higher, of course, um, but it should not be under uh, 16. So just keep this in mind. Uh, another huge difference uh, is that in Japan, sunscreen are sold um, like to use like for everyday activities, which means basically when you are mostly at home, maybe a little bit in front of a windows, you are going like to run some errands outside, but not for a very long time. <laughs> basically, you are not like going to, I don't know, to, to play tennis outside, to go to the beach and etc. And they always specify it when you buy um, the, the sunscreen. And they have another category, both of them, by the way, are all SPF 50 plus, that is going to be sold uh, when you are going to do outdoors activities like sports, going to the beach and etc. And um, the differences basically that are highlighted by the brands is really like the resistance of the film and maybe the SPF and maybe the UV protection will also be higher. Of, of course, for this, I cannot really um, tell you, but this is important because some of the sunscreen you cannot use them when you are going to the beach. They were not made uh, for that. They were just made for, like I've said, everyday activities. If you are going to sweat a lot, if you are going to be exposed a long time um, under the sun, please do not use those type of sunscreen. So the, the big, big problem, I think, is uh, really um, about the translation. Uh, I should say the traduction. <laughs> Which word is it? I don't remember, maybe traduction. Um, one website that I highly, highly recommend, which is not, there is a blog part, but most of the content on this website is only um, about um, traduction. So um, the name is Radzilla Cosme. I'm going to leave the link down below. It is in English. And what she does, uh, um, I really love her work. She just translates um, about the sunscreen. So I give you an example with the Anessa. You are going to find the filters. You are going to find the date. You are going to find also how much uh, do you have. And every time in the description, she is going to tell you if this sunscreen is made for everyday activities or for outdoors activities. And you also have a very, very useful list of ingredients. So you will know like that if you have any like sensitivity, for example, you can check the ingredient. Be very, very careful, especially with Japanese product. There are so, so many wrong traductions. They are just false. Um, and even the ingredient list, or they are too old. For example, for the Anessa, they basically renew their sunscreen every two um, years. So to just to give you uh, two examples, just in the Anessa, if you go to the website of Anessa, you will see that this one, which is probably the most iconic, which is the perfect UV sunscreen skincare on milk. I have an old video about all the Anessa uh, sunscreen. This one is made when you are exposed to the sun for a long time, when you're going to play tennis, when you're going to the beach, when you will spend some time outside. However, they have another one, which is this one, oopsie, <laughs> which is the whitening UV sunscreen gel. I just have the mini version. Um, I think I got rid of the big one because it was way too old. Um, this one is made for everyday activities. So when you are mainly at home, mainly at your office, basically you are not exposed that much to the sun. And this one also contains tranexamic um, as acid, which is really helpful to fade uh, hyperpigmentation, especially for melasma prone skin. And anyway, 
But it's just to give you an example, another big, big example, and this is how actually I got the idea of making this video. Um, I've already seen it a, a couple of times actually on an um, English channel on YouTube, but also on a French uh, channel, uh, where the famous Bure, Bure, which is the Bure UV uh, Aquarish Essence, this one is so, so well known, but this one is, is made for everyday activities. This one is by no means made uh, to be used when you are exposed to the sun at the beach um, and etc. So anyway, that was it for my uh, comeback videos. Let's put it like that. I hope you did like it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not already done it. Um, what else to tell you? I am a little bit rusty. Of course, leave a comment. Uh, you can also follow me on my um, Instagram. Uh, even though I still don't know if I'm going to start like right away the Instagram because it's uh, a lot and a lot of work. Anyway, thank you so much <laughs> and I will see you next time. Au revoir.